טוב, אבאני. בוקר טוב, we're dedicating the שיעור לעילוי נשמת דבורה פייגה בת שמואל, אורה דבורה בת שמואל, לאה בת יוסף, אנסטר רבקה בת אברהם. You know, רבותיי, we're approaching now יום הדין, the day of judgment. And uh, let's be honest, sometimes we feel that uh, it's fine, you know. I wasn't so bad throughout the year. At the end of the day, you know, I, I came every day, Shaharit min Kharvit. I, uh, I don't know, I kept Shabbat, I did my, I put on tefillin. I, I gave charity. Wasn't so bad, right? Sometimes we have that type of feeling that, uh, you know, there are words at us. Rabotai, the difference in between Borei Olam and human being is that a person sees, can see our actions, our physical actions. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu can see also our thoughts. And uh, if knowing this, if we wanted to be sure, saying to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you know what, God, I want you to judge me without mercy, if I can take one day of the year that I will be sure that all my thoughts and all my actions that I did throughout that day, that 24 hours, were 100% correct, I don't think, at least me, I don't think that I can find one day of the year that I can say, you know what? Everything was okay, and about that day, God, you can judge me straight. No problem. No such thing. About every single thought, Borei Olam knows it. If it is a thought of jealous, if it is a thought of hate, if it is a thought of things that are improper, if all type of thoughts and things that we saw, that we heard, that we spoke, that we, that we moved, that we did. And I'm not saying about what we didn't do. Now the Khar writes, that if a person sees the law alenu velo alechem, there are problems coming in, you have to do a check, an internal check in, check out, yeah, whatever. And you have to think what was wrong. Says the Gemara, and if he checked everything and he knows that he didn't do anything wrong, the Gemara writes, it le be bitul Torah. He should, uh, he should think about bitul Torah. Why bitul Torah? Because Bitul Torah, it's not only when I'm in the middle of learning and I speak with my friend instead, or I'm chatting in the phone. That's not Bitul Torah. Bitul Torah, you know what that means? Bitul Torah is the moments that I had the possibility to learn and I didn't. The moments that I have free time, and I have free time instead of, uh, you know, hearing a shiur, opening a book, reading some tehillim, instead of that I was, uh, you know, chilling, it's called. You know, relaxing. Rabotai, judgment, we need rachamim. Only rachamim. The question is, how can we get this rachamim from God? We want to be sure that this coming up Rosh Hashanah, we're going to be 100% okay that Borei Olam is going to judge us with rachamim. How we do it? So I'm going to tell you. There are many ways. One of the ways is the following. There was a couple that came up to a rabbi. True story. I know the rabbi. They came up to the rabbi and they told him, Rabbi, the lady, Rabbi, I can't handle him anymore. The guy is, uh, you know, gets nuts, gets crazy, yells all the time. He's angry all the day long. You know, I cannot continue like that. And she gave him examples, terrible examples on how he behaves and how he speaks and how he answers. The rabbi hears, and then he turns to the husband. No, now you tell me, what, what, what do you have to say for you, you know? So he says, Rabbi, I don't understand. I wasn't, I didn't become angry from nowhere. When she got married to me, she knew that she was getting married to an angry guy. Rabbi, in the meetings, I was, I was yelling at her. She knew. Now she have issues, you know. Go and arrange it by yourself. What do you want from me? 
I was born like that. I was educated like that. All my life I was like that. I never hide it from her. Halas, that's what she wanted. That's what she got. I never saw a baby angry. I don't know about you, but you know, stop thinking about it. Anyway, so the rabbi asked him, uh -huh, so you were born like that, right? And that's part of your, your being, to be angry. Let me ask you a question, but I want you to tell me honestly, you know, with the, the hand in your heart. Tell me something. Imagine the situation that it will make you the most angry possible. Something happened to you, somebody did to you, something spoke to you. So he said, you know, the worst. But you have right next to you somebody that you really appreciate. Not only appreciate, that you respect him. I don't know who can, who can it be. It could be, I don't know, your father. It could be the Gadol Ador, the main rabbi. And the Baba Sali was next to you. Could it be, uh, I, I don't know, whoever. I'm of deep in college, the whole Donald Trump next to you. Did you all react the same exact way that you react to your wife when you have these type of people next to you? Honestly. And the, the guy, you know, was honest and he told the rabbi, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's, uh, I don't want to, to think that I am a uh, Meshuga and that's why I know. So the rabbi told him, so you see that you weren't born angry? If you were getting, if, if you were born angry, there was no difference who is standing next to you. Rabotai, there is no such thing that I am like that. Unfortunately, we come and we have these type of thoughts, and I want to be open with you. We have these type of thoughts that, you know, God created me like that. God understands me. You know, I know that I'm not okay. I know, I know that I'm not a great tzaddik, but listen, <laughs> it's something built up in me. There is no such thing. If you have things to fix, it's because Boreolam is giving you the power to do it. If he wasn't giving you the power to do it, he wasn't putting you in this challenge. If we have the challenge of anger, if we have the challenge of jealousy, if we have the challenge of ta'avod, of desires, if we have all types of, of challenges, it's because we can handle it. And we have to trust in ourselves. The question is going to be how we do it, how that works. So I'm going to tell you something amazing. I know a rabbi that uh, in Hebrew it's called Jinji. You know Jinji? Jinji is redhead. Ah, you used to be Jinji? Good. So I'm not talking about you, Freddy. But this, this rabbi said that because he was Jinji, he had a very high temperature. Ah, that's what they said about the Jinjis. Ah, I'm not sure. Ah, yeah, Freddy. Yeah? <laughs> very high temperature. And uh, he got engaged. And before the wedding, he started to think, Bar Minan, you know, I, I'm going to be with this temperature with my wife. After one month, two months, get Rabbanut. What should we do? What should I do? He went to one of his rabbis. I had it straight from him. And he asked him, Rabbi, I'm scared. I'm scared because my my my." My temperature and my nature is to be angry very easy. And the rabbi told him, no problem. You know what you're going to do? I want you to buy a suit with the color of your hair. For what? So just buy it. And you're going to get angry. But every time that you want to get angry, you cannot get angry without wearing the suit. It's together with the pants, right? Together with the pants and the jacket, once you got it, once you wear it, then Habibi, scream, yell, throw uh, chairs, whatever you want. Without the suit, you're not allowed. The rabbi told us, you know, there are some advices that people are saying, oh, okay, 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 and they forget about it. He said, I'm doing it. He said, until I found the, the, the suit, you know, that collar was a little bit hard. But I found it. 
And I bought it, and I had it in my closet. And every time that I was getting mad, or about my wife, or about my kids, or about whatever situation, I wasn't getting angry until I was changing. Believe me, it worked. Over 90% of the, of the times, at the end, I, I didn't get angry. Why? Explains it's very easy. Rabotai, if we realize, like I said before, if I had somebody next to me, an important pe person next to me, I wasn't getting angry, I wasn't behaving incorrect, why do why we behave like that? Because it's an impulsive action. We don't even realize, we don't even think that God is right over here. If we were thinking that God is watching us, and according to our action now, we're going to have consequences, Rabotai, most of us, in the 90% of the cases, weren't making any avon, any avera. What's the problem? The impulsive, the straight up. And not only in anger, every single midah, every single uh, 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 quality maybe, right? That's how it works. Say chachamim, because the yetzerara acts straight, you have to know how to tell to the yetzerara, give me four, five more minutes, and then I do it. So this rabbi was saying, very interesting, he was saying, people are asking, what should I take on myself this coming up Rosh Hashanah? And being honest, oh, how many times I took on myself things, <laughs> on different Rosh Hashanah, and next Rosh Hashanah I forgot, ah, what did I do last year? You know, we forget. What can we take on ourselves this coming of Rosh Hashanah? So he said something very interesting. He said, take on yourself that you're going to react impulsively only after five minutes. You're going to do whatever you yet said that I want only after five minutes. Pushing. You're going to find yourself controlling yourself much more than last year. There was a great rabbi, famous story. The father of Rav Chaim Kanievsky, the stipler was his name. The stipler was, was a Dora Dora, was a great Chacham. And when, when he was in Europe, in Russia, he was, he was in the army. They obligated him to be in the army. And you know, Russia, you can be in the winter, minus, I don't know how much, uh, 50, terrible. So he said that he was, he was uh, supposed to uh, keep a certain place in the middle of the winter. And they had this coat, you know, very heavy coat that was protecting the soldiers from, uh, from, the, from the tough uh, uh, freezing cold weather. Now, I heard it two different ways. Some of them are saying that it will happen on Shabbat. Some of them are saying that it didn't happen on Shabbat. It was a weekday. But the idea is the, is the same. Let's give the example of Shabbat. He got to the place, and there was a soldier before him, and the soldier before was supposed to wait until he will come, and then to give him the coat. The rabbi gets there, and he finds that the soldier is not there, and the coat is on top of the tree. Now what's the problem? Just take it. No, there is a halakha, that on Shabbat, the person is not allowed to use anything that is on a tree. It's a gezerat chazal, chachamim, prohibited, not to come to bar minan, breaking up any branches or something like that. It's a, not to do it on Shabbat. If you have a ball that flies in, uh, in the trees, my son is uh, telling me, Daddy, Daddy, bring me the ball. On Shabbat, it's a sur. We're not allowed. Shabbat Yom Tov is the same halakha. Now, according to halakha, this man is allowed, this rabbi is allowed to take out the coat or not? For sure, yes. Pikuach nefesh. If he's not going to take it, he's going to die. What's the question? So he was allowed to do it. And the rabbi knew. But the rabbi said to himself, one second, can I wait five minutes before I take it? Five minutes. I'm going to freeze a little. Five minutes. Five minutes. I take the coat. And he waited. And he did from that five minutes another five. Rabotai, 12 hours, he was able to pass just by pushing five minutes. He didn't use it. Obviously, we're not in that level. But one thing I want to tell you, that if we have the capacity to push the Yetzirah five minutes, five minutes, that's the whole story. 
you're going to find yourself you're going to find yourself making a huge turn protecting yourself you know the Mishnah Brura it's basically the Rama. the Rama was Rabbi Moshe Isalish who was Rabbi Moshe Isalish he lived in the same time of the author of the Shulchan Aruch Rabbi Yosef Karo lived at the same time Rabbi Yosef Karo was living in Tzfat Rabbi Moshe Isalish was living in Europe by the way, very interesting. I heard that. I never saw it written. Rabbi Moshe Salish wrote a whole Shulchan Aruch. The same as the Shulchan Aruch that we have today from Rabbi Yosef Karo. But Rabbi Yosef Karo took it out before. Now they, they, I, I don't think they knew each other. When the Shulchan Aruch of Rabbi Yosef Karo get, gets to the Rabbi Rabbi Moshe Salish, he saw the Shulchan Aruch. He says, oh my gosh. Now I'm going to take another Shulchan Aruch. It's going to be what? Machloket and Balagan. He took his book and he burned it. And he said, I'm not going to put any Machloket. It doesn't matter how much I work for it. And he did, instead of that, he added on the Shulchan Aruch himself. And whoever learns Mishnah Brura Shulchan Aruch, he is going to find it. He added that whatever things the Ashkenazim, they don't follow the Sephardim, he added in small letters, yeah, like a haga, like a, you know, uh, footnote, yeah, like like additionally to the Shulchan Aruch, I know the halacha, unbelievable. So this Rabbi Rabbi Moshe uh, Isserlish, he writes his first halacha of the whole Shulchan Aruch, his first, you know, footnotes they wrote. What is the first halacha? It says like this. Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid hu klal gadol batora. Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid is I had God in front of my eyes constantly. Rabotai, if having Donald Trump next to me, I will behave different. And I'm of Dilben Kodesh Recho, having Chacham of Adiyah Yosef next to me, I will behave differently. It doesn't matter how much is going to be next to me, one day or a whole month. Having Borea Olam by himself, right next to me how can I do how can I behave like I'm behaving what's the answer the answer is that you think I'm thinking about it <laughs> I'm not even thinking about it when I act that's exactly the point try to push it five minutes those five minutes think think I'm not alone think I have Borel on that next to me Rabotai those five minutes are critical so I think it's an, it's an amazing, it's an amazing point. That's one way to be able to pass Rosh Hashanah. Oh, so just to add, how, the, how this is going to help us. I'm going to give you a mashal, and with this mashal, we're going we're gonna to finish today. I'm passing to another shoe. Right. Beautiful mashal that I heard. There was a king, and the king wanted, wanted uh, to do a special event. And he wore in that event a special crown. He said, I want to wear the, you know, the most beautiful crown ever. So he sent up to all the people that, uh, you know, they have to do with gold and silver and stuff. Rabotai, give, give, me, give me a sample. You know, give me something. Uh, show me that you're going to be able to give me the best, the best crown that you have. And I will pay for it. Don't worry. Rabotai. All, all the people that are, were involved with gold and silver, etc., they worked on something. The king had, the king got, I don't know, hundreds, if not thousands, of different samples, pictures, and how it's gonna look, you know, 3D, the whole thing. Finally, the king decided to choose one of them. It was really the most beautiful one that he saw. He called up the guy and he told the man, listen, I choose on your crown. I think it's a beautiful thing. I hope you're going to be able to do it. So you have, you have one year. One year, it's enough time. One year to work in the crown. Next year, you know, this month I'm going to do a huge event. And I want the crown with me. Rabotai, the guy tells the king, you know what? Your Majesty, I'm ready to do it, but I need money. 
Uh, it's not easy. It's a lot of money. I need money. How much money do you need? Says the king. I need half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. Your majesty, if you give me 500,000, Hashem, you're going to give your crown perfectly in a year. The king gave it to him. And the guy is going out from the palace and he thinks to himself, Ya Habibi, how long is it going to take me to do the crown? How long? Six months. What am I going to do with another six months? I ain't getting ready the money. Let's invest it in something. I'm going to get some fruits, some extra. And then after six months, I take it out. I make the crown and everybody will be happy. Everybody will be happy. Uh -huh. So the guy invested. And the guy put it in the stock market. Uh -huh. And after six months, I realized that all these $500,000 are gone. Titchabad also. Baratzon to Akadosh Baruch Hu. It's over. It's over. The guy realized half a billion dollars, it's over. He's going to be dead. The king, if he's not going to get him the crown that he promised him, he's going to hang him in front of everybody. What are I going to do? What are I going to do? He started to check. Who is going to give him uh, half a million dollars now? He says, you know what? He checked out in his savings. He sell up his house, whatever. He was able to raise 100000 That's all. 100000 it's not enough to do the, the crown. So he decided to do the following. He said, I'm going to take with whatever amount of money I have. And I'm going to make the same exact type of crown in miniature. That's all what I have. And he worked on it. Took him, took him a few weeks. He was able to do something unbelievable. Amazing. He came with this tiny crown, but beautiful, real gold with real diamonds and real whatever you can imagine. He put it in a small box, box. And then he put another box on top. And like that, he made a big package. And five months before the party, the guy arrives to the king with the box. Gets to the king. What do you mean? Oh, so fast. How you did it in this? <laughs> I want to speak with the king face to face. He accepted. Please, your majesty, open up. And he started to open one box. And there is another one. Another one. And he's going closer and closer. Smaller and smaller and smaller. And he thinks to himself, Yeah, Habibi. <laughs> We're going to put it uh, like a uh, sika in the kippah. How are we going to put the, the crown? He gets finally to the crown and he sees it's a beautiful crown that no one can deny it. An amazing, amazing job. And, he, and the man tells the king, Your Majesty, this is for you as a sample, real sample of how the crown is going to look. Wow. Thank you so much. And what about the real crown? And then the guy bent down to the floor, and he starts to cry. Your Majesty, I did the most huge mistake in my life. I thought that I'm going to gain, and I end up losing. And listen, Your Majesty, I lost the whole money. The king hears that. You're nuts. You're crazy. I, I trust in you, and you lost everything. And the guy cries for his life. I beg you, forgive me. You know, I lost all the money. But you see this small crown? I put it from my own pocket, my own $100,000. It is this, this crown, just to show you that if you're going to give me one more chance, I promise I will not make this mistake again. Obviously, the king seeing this effort, allows him, and he gives him a second chance. Rabbi on Rosh Hashanah, we are crowning a Kadosh Baruch Hu for a whole year. Avinu Markenu, we're making God out as our king. But last year, we had a chance. God gave us a whole life. God gave us health. God gave us, you know, money, whatever, whatever we were needing to crown him. What do we do with that? We really crown him? 
or we spend it in different things and we lost it. Ay, ay, Rabotai, we're coming to Rosh Hashanah, which merit? How come we come to Akadosh Baruch Hu, Borei Olam, give me one more year? How? You know how? Let's make a small vow. Let's show to God, you know, Borei Olam, you're right. I made a disaster. Right here, I'm giving one thing I'm able to give. Those five extra minutes before I do the action, whatever Kabbalah, whatever good things that you want to take on yourself, for real. I'm ready to take on myself in my own pocket. And then we come to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, forgive me. And give me one more chance. For sure HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to give it to us. Rabotai, there was a man that came up to Rav Chaim Kanievsky not a long time ago. And he told him, Rabbi, I have two options before Rosh Hashanah. I have one thing that I do a lot of Averot because of that thing, Yitzharara in a certain issue. I can take on myself to control myself, not to make the scene, but it's going to take me only, you know, maximum 40 days until after Yom Kippur. After Yom Kippur, for sure, I'm going to fall again. And the second option is to take something that is smaller, much smaller, but I think that I'm going to be able to control the whole year. Well, what's better? Big thing not to do it, right? Big Averot or small Averot, right? But to do it the whole year. And the rabbi looked at the guy and he said, I don't understand the question. For sure, the whole year it's better. Why? Because Borei Olam knows that we have Yetzirah. And Borei Olam knows that we're not going to turn up to be angels next year. But Borei Olam wants to see how much we're ready to give, which effort we're ready to, to put. And that effort is going to change the whole entire year. And I'm going to tell you what I said last year and two years ago as well. I had a rabbi. We asked him, Rabbi, I don't know, I don't know which, which, uh, which good thing I should take on myself this year. What do you recommend? And the rabbi sat down with us. And he's also going to tell you what I heard from my rabbi, he said. And he said like this, he said, I want you to think five minutes about one thing that you would like to improve this coming up year. Let's do it together now. Five minutes, think about one thing that you would like to improve. One, the first thing that comes in, into your mind. You have it? Good. Now, once you got it, split it in half. What that means, split it in half? Don't take the whole thing to change. Say to yourself, you know what? Half a time I'm going to try to keep it. You got the half? Then he said, take this half, split it in half as well. Take only one, one quarter. You got it? Split it in half again. And now you got it? Take only 5%. And this 5%, Commit yourself, it doesn't matter what's going to happen. It doesn't matter if it's going to be now before Rosh Hashanah Kippur or it's going to be in Bahamas in, in vacation in summer. It doesn't matter where you're going to be and what's going to be the, the issue, having issues with money or not having issues with money, having Shalom Bayit or not having Shalom Bayit. You're going to do that 5% that you took on yourself, doesn't matter what. So we ask him, Rabbi, <laughs> that's a joke. 5% it's nothing. And then he says, you're right. But the answer is, what happened those years? Did you take something on yourself? Of course. Did you keep it? Oh, of course not. <laughs> he said, that's exactly. Every year you're going to be taking 5% a step on. And you're going to find yourself after a few years making a huge change. But the Yitzhara knows that. And when we come to Yom Kippur, he says, yeah, catch 5% here, and 5% there, and another 5 and this, and that, and that, right? And then tafasta merube, lo tafasta. You're going to take too much, you're going to come out with a zero. Rabotai, let's make the small crown. Let's make it very small. But let's come with something that we're, we're going to be sure that we're going to keep it this year. If it is berachot, how many times we say berachot, you know that we swallow words. Or we eat without even thinking about the beracha. Maybe. 
just thinking out loud. Maybe before we eat, the Kabbalah can be, you know, before I eat, I look at the food. I look at it, that's going to remind me to say the Berakha. I'm going to say the Berakha slow, and then I eat it. By the way, it's Halakha, especially on Kiddush of Shabbat, to hold up the cup and to look at the Kiddush cup, the whole entire Berakha. Why is that? Not to have other type of thoughts at the moment of the Kiddush. Rabotai, this halakha applies for every single thing that you eat. Even tefillin, you look at the tefillin, right? And then you see the berakha by looking at it. You're going to be focused only by watching it, as an example. Or you got out from, from the restroom, asher yitzar. Instead of saying asher yitzar tefillat aderech, say asher yitzar, standing, not moving. And like that, you have so many details. But let's take one small detail at a time. I just want to finish up because we have the, the other group now. There is one more thing that can change and that can assure us that this coming Rosh Hashanah we're going to be written and signed in the Book of Life. And this is an insurance that doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter what happens, doesn't matter if we don't even deserve it. At the moment that we do it, we assure ourselves that Borei Olam is going to forgive all our, of our sins. What is that? Hamim are teaching us. Nose avon ve'ober al pesha. Right? That's one of the midot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Nose avon. He forgive avonot. Ve'ober al pesha. And he passed by Peshaim. Peshaim is another type of, av of Averot. Says the Gemara, Lemi unose avon. To who bore olam is ready to forgive totally? Lemi shu unose. Unose avon ve'over al pesha. Lemi shu over al pesha. Whoever is able to pass over the midot that a person have. Example. Example. A guy comes, he's really thirsty after Yom Kippur. He's thirsty and he's hungry and he's starving him for death. Comes back home, right? And he sees his wife already prepared the whole food. And he just wants to jump inside the food to grab some burekas, I don't know what, and to eat it. And at that moment, those seconds, there is mitzvah beracha. No, it's beracha. Say a blessing. And at that moment, you stop yourself. That, that, that automatic uh, 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 impulse that we have, we stop for ourselves one second, and we say beracha. This is called over al pesha. You were able to control your automatic instincts. Say chachamim bore olam reacts or acts basically the same way that we act here on earth. If in, the, if in this world we're able to control ourselves a little, but Olam also controls himself and is able also to wipe out Averot. Say Chachamim, if that's with a Beracha, imagine what is if when a person is getting embarrassed, when a person is getting insulted, when a person is getting, you know, damaged by somebody else, and at that moment, he decides, I'm not going to react. Say, Chachamim, this guy was over al pesha. Somebody did something wrong to him, and he was able to forgive. He was able to pass over. Say, Kadosh Baruch Hu, your Averot, I pass her over as well. There was a kid that a rabbi told me. He saw it in, a, in a, he lived in, 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 a, in Israel. And he said, I saw two kids fighting. It was before Rosh Hashanah. Two kids fighting. They got into a fight. One of the kids got so angry, smack him on the face. He said, I was watching the reaction. I was, you know, sure that the guy is going to beat him up. The guy covers his head, his face, and he says, Aha, you're lucky. You're lucky that we hold him before Rosh Hashanah. If he was after Rosh Hashanah, I was beating you up. He said, that's a kid. But you know what he did? He controlled himself. He said, that action of controlling, those moments that he decided, you know what? I pass over. 
you don't understand that at those moments, you were able to close to yourself to Akadosh Baruch Hu, wiping up and passing over all our Averot. It's an unbelievable segula. So sometimes we have challenges, especially inside the house. If it is with our wife, if it is with our kids, if it is with our parents or brothers or, or business. And we see somebody that is acting so bad with us. Be happy. It's an opportunity. Say, Chachamim, Adam la'amal yula, the person have two ways in life. One way is bar minan lo alenu velo alechem, suffering, real suffering. I don't know. I don't have to give examples. The other one is suffering and spiritual suffering. What is the spiritual suffering? Somebody embarrassed you. Somebody spoke Lashon and he heard him about you. Somebody cursed you. Somebody, you know, did steal from you money. And at that moment, you're ready to pass it over. I want to tell you, it's amazing. And I said the, this story last year. Beautiful story. And because it's so true, because I know the rabbi, I know the, this person, he was involved in that case. I can tell you 100% that the story is true. Listen up. There was an event in Jerusalem. I think it was in Jerusalem. They made a Shabbaton. You know what's a Shabbaton? They invited up all type of people for Shabbaton. The Shabbaton, most of the people are people that are not uh, so connected to Judaism, but they, they're interested to, to come and learn. They made a beautiful Shabbaton. Motzei Shabbat. <coughs> they were praying Arvit. Already was the end of the Shabbaton. And the rabbi that was invited was one of the main guest speakers at this Shabbaton. He realized that once they finish Arvit and the people are going outside the shul, the in charge of the Shabbaton goes out and there are two to three people Two people, I'm sorry, two people that approach this guy and they start to discuss with him about, uh, about an issue. And he starts to raise their voice. Now all the, the people, they, you, know, you know, they stop and they, they're watching. And not only that, they started to yell at him, to embarrass him, and one of the guys spit on him. The rabbi said, I see all this. And Rabotai, you cannot even imagine which type of embarrassment it was. The rabbi said, if I don't act now, it's going to turn up terrible. He jumped on the guy, or on the guy that got embarrassed. He took his hand very strongly and he pushed it inside the shoe. So you should come with me right now. Rabbi, leave me alone. No, 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 you're going to come with me right now. And he was pushing into one of the rooms of the shoe. He gets to the room, he closes the, ro the, the door of the room. He locks the door. And he tells him, listen, I want to ask you one favor and then you go out. One favor I have for you. And he told him, listen, I want to tell you, last week I got a couple in my office. And this couple, they're already married 20 years. They cannot get a child. They were crying to me because they went to the last doctor that they had, telling them that there is no chance for them to have a child. And I told them, don't worry. But Olam is over nature. And when you trust on God, but Olam can do whatever he wants. He doesn't need any doctor to do it. But there is one thing that I can recommend you. Find somebody that is ma'avir al-midotav and ask for him a beracha. And that's how I, 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 I send them that out. I beg you. Don't do it for me. Think about this couple. Be ready to forgive to these guys that they don't deserve it. They embarrass you and they did terribly. But be ready to forgive them. For real. And please give a beracha to this couple. The rabbi told me, you don't understand. The man didn't know even the couple. And he was to admire him. He stopped and he sat down. And after a few seconds, he started to cry. He got so embarrassed 
so touched that to forgive to these two people was such a work. After a few minutes, he stood up and he told the rabbi, Rabbi, I forgive them. Give me the names of the couple. Rabbi, the stories I, I have here are a lot of stories, but this story I know, this rabbi personally. He told me, after 10 months, I get a call and I see on my phone the name of the husband. I answer the phone and he says, Rabbi, and I say, don't continue. Your wife got pregnant. I said, how do you know, Rabbi? He said, I know already 10 months ago. Because Borei Olam acts according to how we act in this world. If we act above nature, Borei Olam acts with us above nature. It's not a segula. It's a result. If we're ready to go above our nature and to control our anger, Borei Olam also acts the same way. And believe me, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu is acting with that and So Rabbi let's try to take all these points to summary them. Number one, let's take one small thing at a time. Not big things. This Rosh Hashanah, one small step on. It's something that you're going to be sure that you're going to keep it. Number two, Five minutes that we spoke before any reaction. Five minutes. And number three, let's try to be Oved Al Pesha. Let's try that if there is somebody that hurts you right now, be ready to forgive him. Belev Shalem. And the merit of that forgiveness, but Olam is going to have mercy on us and is going to judge us for good. To give to all of us Shana Tova Mevorechet. Amen. Amen. Amen.